explain guilt, its origin, and how to process it correctly. Okay, so we are, of course, all familiar with the feeling of guilt. It's that experience that arises from violating our own moral beliefs. Which, of course, brings in the question of what is morality and what makes something moral, immoral, or amoral. Getting to the question of the origin of guilt, why do we violate our own moral code? We violate our own moral code because even though there's something in me which knows I should not do this, there is a competing desire and the unavailability of the intellect to mediate between those desires. So you have a desire for junk food, you have a desire to be physically healthy. They're competing desires. How will you mediate between what to choose? Well, whichever desire happens to be strongest in that moment is the winner. Okay, that's not obviously how we want to be managing our lives. We need that mediating intellect to help guide the desires that we're going to identify with. So the reason that we chose, quote unquote, the wrong desire is because in that moment, the intellect was unavailable. We can think of it as having two aspects, the cognitive and the affective. The understanding part and the feeling part. The cognitive aspect is an understanding of what you have done. And so there is a sense of meaning that comes from that. I yell at my kids. What does it mean? It means I'm a bad parent. So what we've got is this dissonance between the actual self and the expected self. Anytime we feel guilty, it's because we have this notion that I ought to have done something else. There's also the affective domain, which is our feelings, our emotions. So anytime we think of an emotion or set of feelings, one of the ways we can start to look at it is to think of it as a modification of desire. For example, you have a desire for something, it gets interrupted, that desire modifies into anger. You have a desire for a certain level of accomplishment, you see someone who has more than that, there's envy. And this is where, for the individual, it's important to start to ask this question, what's the desire that's been modified to give me this feeling that I have right now? Could, for example, be self-image. There is a desire to believe in oneself as a good parent. So when I yell at my kids, that desire to see myself that way is violated. It gets modified into this feeling of guilt. External perceptions. How often have you seen someone experience guilt when they're caught? We all have a desire for our own sense of free will or autonomy. When we look back on our past actions, we might feel, I didn't want to do that, and yet I did it again. And so I don't feel free. I feel that I'm being controlled by something other than myself. When we talk about the emotion of guilt, we can start to characterize it along these three axes. Activating and deactivating. So take, for example, the emotion of fury. All right, that's clearly going to be an activating emotion. It activates your thinking. It activates your action. It motivates you to do something. Think about the emotion of depression. It's deactivating. Ecstasy, activating, bliss. You could say it's deactivating. I just let go of all the things I don't need to think about, that I don't need to do. Oh, blissful. Pleasant and unpleasant, easy to understand. Joy is pleasant, terror is unpleasant. I don't like it. 
when we think about positive and negative, we can think about it in terms of the direction that the emotion takes us. Or perhaps another way to think about it is to think of emotion as an environment or a soil. What is conducive to grow in that environment? So gratitude's a really good example here. Gratitude is clearly a positive emotion in the sense of the sorts of thoughts flowing on emotions and actions that you will naturally gravitate towards. Anger, is it positive or negative? Hatred, negative. So when we think about guilt, will we say it's activating or deactivating? So we have that experience perhaps of, oh, I feel guilty about something. It's almost a bit like a depression. It makes us sort of sit back and do nothing. It can also be activating. You feel guilty about something, I've got to contact him and do this and say this and apologize. It can actually be activating as well. Pleasant or unpleasant? It's fairly easy. No one likes feeling guilty. And positive or negative? Guilt could be positive or negative and it may have both at the same time. So this is an important point to understand is that what we've got here in terms of these three poles, it's black and white, the way we're describing it here. Is it A or B? That's black and white thinking, which can be useful to a degree, but it is a limitation. So positive or negative depends very much on the way that we're relating to it. And so this is the second part of the question, of course, which is what's the best way to process it? 